What makes a good session player? Somebody who can fit into any situation? Somebody who keeps their mouth shut? Somebody who shows up on time? What? <laughs> All of those things, yeah. You definitely got to be on time. Guys that come up late, uh, everybody ends up getting pissed off at them, and you don't want to. But do uh, you, uh, it's funny because it, it, uh, Nikolai, I don't know, I guess you all know Nikolai. He's, he's the one that picked us up today. There he is. <laughs> we were talking about this. Um, the most important thing in a session player, believe it or not, is your feel. Whatever you're playing, it's got to be your, your feel. And you, if you break it down scientifically, your feel is going to be your touch on your instrument and your time. You've got to have great time. That's what makes a great studio musician. You gotta, when you're playing with a click, it's not necessarily that you gotta be metronomically perfect to it, but you've gotta, it's just gotta feel great. And you can't, you gotta make sure that you play great with the drummer that's playing, right? And if you're the drummer, well, you're laying it down and you know everybody's following you. And if you, uh, if you suck, everybody sucks. That's basically how it goes. And that comes down to chops. That's the kind of chops I'm talking about. You know, if you really practice hard and study, I think for uh, most instrument, classical training is, is um, almost mandatory. You know, it of course you've got to learn jazz and you've got to learn your theory and all that. You want to have a lot of theory so that when you play a cool chord, you've got the coolest voicing, you know. Um, is there a lot of keyboard players here, and guitar players? You got a hands on that? Not a lot. What are y'all drummers? <laughs> a lot of singers. A lot of singers, right? Well, singers. I mean, man, yeah, there's a whole thing there. My daughter is, is an aspiring singer, and uh, that takes a lot of study. That takes a lot of um, got to have great pitch in the studio. Again, great time and great feel. That's a, that's mandatory in any instrument. Is is time and feel. And you know they're they're kind of one and the same. But you know you could have feel, but you could drag, and that would be That'd not be cool. That would be a drag. <laughs> well, um, who's your favorite drummer? Well, that's I mean I love uh, my very favorite drummer. He died about six years ago. Jeff Picaro. Oh really? Yeah, he was my favorite. I've done hundreds of sessions with him. And he was the drummer from Toto. I don't know if any of you know Toto, but they're really an incredible band. Yeah, they're they're musically. There isn't anybody to beat them. They just at that point it just becomes different. And there are, of course, you know, better bands in the whole. There is Led Zeppelin and those kind of bands, but you know, and they're they're definitely, you know, historical bands. But he was incredible, and he could just fit in any situation. His time was impeccable. His feel was, he would play with the click, and rather than just be right on the click every time, he would kind of mess around with it. And as long as you just followed him, you were there. And I think there's a, that's a good way to be, is to just follow the drummer. Let the drummer listen to the click. Of course, unless he's not playing, then it's up to you. You know, if you're doing, if you're playing the intro, and there's no drums, and you just click, then you're the one that's, that's always, the, In the sessions that I've done, I've always tried to keep the click only with the drummer, but like everybody else wants to hear oh yeah, no, you got to. They have to kind of have a, a balance between the click and the drums. You know, and sometimes you need to be a point. If you've got a bad drummer in there and he's making a thing, then everybody's got to stick to the click yeah. and just say, "Hey, come on." But you get called as a part of the section. I mean, usually if you find yourself a drummer or a bass player in a rhythm section that really works, sometimes the rhythm section gets called, right? Does that happen to you? As how do you mean it gets I called mean, they, as? They, 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 for the record date, you get called as a group. Oh, uh, no, I have never been called as a group, no, no. It, only individually. I mean, I'm, I've always been self, uh, you know, self-employed, so you whoever's... Can, you can adapt to any drama that you deal with in the studio situation. Pretty much, yeah. You just got to listen. If they slow down a little bit in a fill or something like that, just go with them. And it just makes it sound great. A lot of rock, great rock and roll records, you know, they slow down going to the chorus a little bit. Right. Or they speed up going to the chorus. It, that's great if it's meant to be. That's all great. As long as everybody's in the same place. That in itself is a good sense of time. Because a bad sense of time would be if the drummer happens to slow down a little bit right before he goes in the chorus and you don't. You're the one that's going to look out of place. You know, it'll sound a lot more cohesive if everybody goes down the same exact path. 